Thanks for joining us. Four o'clock now on your Monday afternoon. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Alexandra Lewis. Thanks for joining us. So following a little bit of traffic news, Right now, eastbound I-70 is closed from Burlington to the Kansas border. This is a live look near Burlington. You can see the camera is shaking from so much wind. CDOT says blowing snow is reducing visibility, and it's really creating some tough driving conditions. Let's take a look at these pics shared by the Kit Carson Sheriff's Office. An Amazon truck slid off the road, and the Sheriff's Office says another driver didn't move over and hit one of the department's SUVs, barely missed another one. A deputy at the scene said the semi-truck slid past him so close that I mean, he could almost touch it. Let's take a live look outside now, see how things are shaping up. This is our horse tooth camera. We did stay in much of the area, socked in, clouds overhead, pretty cold as well, but the snow, that's mostly moved on out of the state. Kathy, it was a storm that certainly impacted many, but it appears that most of the storm's checking out. Well, and it's so interesting, Tom, because I think after several days late last week and into the start of the weekend, we got sunshine, we got 60s, we had that big storm uh, over a week ago, and people thought, oh, we're done, right, with snow and with winter. <laughs> March and April, as we tell you all the time, are our snowiest months, and when you get a fast-moving big storm like this, it's going to make an impact, and certainly if any of you were out this morning, it was very impactful for that morning drive. Here's where the system is now. While the snow is not done, it is winding down across the state beginning to track east away from the area. We had a little break in the cloud cover, but mostly cloudy skies have been the rule. You are going to find improved travel on I-70 and I-25 tonight. A lot of melting today, even though it was really cold, as Tom mentioned. Some of the snow totals, DIA at three inches, five to six in downtown Denver, up to 10 in Roxborough and some of the foothill areas close to a foot of snow. We have gradual clearing expected. It's going to be a very cold night with more snow for the high country midweek, and then we we have sunshine and warmer weather coming the next few days and really only one way to go with current readings in the 20s and 30s. Thankfully, the winds are lighter along the front range, but continue very gusty out east. As Alex was mentioning, out around Yuma and Burlington, they're having some issues with blowing snow as this system winds its way out of Colorado, but things will start to calm over the next few hours. Blizzard warnings continue for extreme northeastern Colorado through midnight winter weather advisories. Also, not looking at much more snow in Denver, but we're going to cover all of that in just a bit. Captain Banks. The credit union in Central Park says they are closing for good and they're blaming the city's housing crisis. Partner Colorado Credit Union's Quebec Street location is just next door to a hotel that turned into a shelter a few months ago. And now they're telling customers their closing is due to safety and security concerns around that branch. Our Jalisa Irizarry found they're not the only business in the area that are facing these issues. Inside this Central Park liquor store, business as usual is tough to describe. Stealing every day, confrontations is like once a week. Sergio Calderon yeah. works here. He says the nearby shelter brings in a lot of crime. They have to hire two more people in order to like just keep keep watch. Basically, there's always something happening. A similar sentiment is forcing another Central Park business to shut down. Partner Colorado Credit Union says the opening of a neighboring shelter has led them to close their doors. Earlier this month, two people were killed inside that shelter on Quebec Street. Denver police say they've received 446 911 calls to this location since November 1st of last year. Colorado Partners is right next door to the shelter. While they wouldn't speak on camera, they say they have not kept track of how many times they've called the police or the nature of the calls. But in an email to customers, they say a number of incidents at and around their branch is raising serious safety concerns. No, nah, it doesn't really surprise me. Calderon says I can, I, I can see why. he gets it. Yeah. He just hopes their business as usual changes. There's not a one day of work where I'm like, oh yeah, like I'll, it's just going to be calm. There's always something happening. We did reach out to the mayor's office for a comment about the credit union closure. They say the city established safety protocols and will work to continue to make improvements. They cited recent changes to that Quebec Street shelter, including additional security cameras, door alarms, and private security on site 24-7. The credit union says they did not reach out to the city about their concerns prior to announcing the closure. Jalisa Rosari, 9 News. Yeah, and Jalisa, I think it's 400 of those calls. Those 911 calls happened this year alone, so you understand the concern. A large amount of calls, right? I mean, I think we did a previous story last week talking about the increase in calls in that fire, that fire station nearby. I mean, clearly there are some concerns, and hopefully they are addressed. Mm -hmm. All right, Jalisa, thank you.
A former Loveland officer is now facing a federal charge that could have him spending the rest of his life in jail. Dylan Miller was arrested in November when a 15 year old girl accused him of sexually assaulting her in a park while he was on duty. She told investigators Miller stopped her and another person in North Lake Park. The victim said Miller told the other person to leave, then took the 15 year old to a secluded area and assaulted her. He's also facing other charges for kidnapping, sexual assault and official misconduct. Miller is expected back in court on April 11th. The mother from Colorado Springs accused of killing her two children and injuring another was back in a courtroom in London today. Kimberly Singler faces multiple counts of first degree murder, attempted murder and child abuse after the incident in December. The U.S. is trying to extradite her back to Colorado. She appeared ever so briefly on video, only speaking to confirm her name and date of birth to the judge. This hearing is just one step in a very long extradition process. In fact, even if a judge rules that she should be extradited, that decision would then be sent to the British government for approval. At this point, we don't expect a ruling from the judge until September at the earliest. No one was hurt today in a fire at a commercial building in Adams County. It started just after 11 o'clock near 101st and Highway 2. South Adams County Fire says the fire started at mile high paving. The employees all got out okay. When crews arrived back, they saw heavy black smoke and reported some explosions. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Let's take a live look at a very busy building down in the lower right hand corner. That's Ball Arena. Nuggets will be home tonight facing Memphis. The Abs, of course, pulled off a great win there yesterday, scoring five straight to beat Pittsburgh in overtime. And if you happen to have a friend who works on the conversion crew at Ball Arena, keep them in your thoughts this week. Yesterday, the first of eight straight days of alternating games for the Nuggets and Abs. Busy days indeed. Ice, court, ice, court, etc. And both teams are rolling right now. People are enjoying watching the Abs and the Nuggets. Great to have them home for a week. The NFL draft is actually a month from today, but right now the Broncos brass is in Orlando at the NFL owners meetings. The big news this morning, though, had to do with the team's look on the field. The team's social media teasing a new look, saying, quote, new threads coming soon. Team president Damani Leach told our Mike Kliss today it's not a rebranding, same colors, same logo, but yet a full redesign. What that means? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Mike Kliss will have more on that. He'll be joining us live from Florida with more on the new uniforms and what the heck's going on at quarterback with head coach Sean Payton in our next half hour. I mean, it's always fun to get new uniforms, but is this like a little smoke and mirrors? Like, don't look at what's happening on the field. <laughs> just look at what we're wearing. So the question is, and it, it, different fans, different, do, do you like the uniforms more or who's in the uniform more? <laughs> I think the person counts a little more, especially right now. It'd be really good to have a really good quarterback in any uniform. In a, yeah, you know, in a little fancy, for the Broncos. fancy new uniform. Hey, big story all week last week. And just a few minutes ago, we heard from Dodger superstar Shohei Otani. He spoke publicly for the first time since the gambling allegations surrounding him and his interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, it all came to light. Well, he said today, He's never bet on baseball or sports and only learned about all of this in the past few days. Upon further questioning, it was revealed that it was actually, in fact, Ipe who had, who was in debt. And told my representatives that I was paying off those debts. So Ipe has been telling everybody around that he that EP has been communicating with Shohei on all of this account to my representative you know to my representative to the team and that hasn't been true. You're referring to it as a complete lie. Shohei says he was blindsided by this. The public image of him and his interpreter Ipe has been very friendly. It appeared to be they were good friends. So many people were doubting the possibility that they weren't connected as far as what was happening with over four million dollars in offshore gambling debts. But uh, Shohei uh, was very clear today saying that he knew nothing of it until the last few days. Yeah, and I mean, that appears to be credible. I know we can just take his word, but he has such like a little crystal clean public image. So you want to believe him. He's the biggest star in the game. <laughs> that's that. for sure. And he's also, you know, saying that it wasn't him. And you'd have to think that uh, for Ipe Muzahara, uh, this certainly puts him in line for some real problems uh, legally. That's right. That he stole four and a half million dollars from Shohei Otani. See how this unfolds. Yep.